Yo guys, what is up? Max for Diablo 4 video, and today we are talking about my Lightning Shred Druid build, aka Shock and Claw. Now, this build just received a massive buff in today's patch. They buffed Shred's base damage, they buffed the healing that it receives, and they buffed its crit damage, um, and I walked into a tier 48 dungeon that is currently 20 levels higher than me and deleted the boss in seconds we sped ran through the content um this build is one of the fastest clearing builds that i've ever seen if you've ever played poe's flicker strike uh this feels very similar you're going to be teleporting from enemy to enemy you have infinite spirit we are critting on every single hit that we do and it is just so much fun this is easily the most fun build uh, i've played i hope i'm not like hyping this up too much i really really enjoy this build uh and the fact that it just got a buff today is so much fun so i hope you guys check it out we're gonna be explaining everything you guys need to know let's get right into it so to start we're gonna do an overview of the build uh what are like the key pieces to make this build function and then we'll get into the specifics aka the like gear aspects the skill tree the paragon board and to start us off uh this build does not require any uniques uh it requires no uniques at all however the most important unique for this build if you are to get one is the waxing gibbeous now the waxing gibbeous is what's going to let us start to really ramp damage with this build. Now, this weapon reads gain stealth for two seconds when killing enemies with shred. Breaking stealth with an attack grants ambush, which guarantees critical strikes for up to 2.5 seconds. So when we kill an enemy with shred, we have 2.5 seconds or up to 2.5 seconds of guaranteed critical strikes. And any time that we kill an enemy during this duration, it resets. So as long as we're killing things, we have permanent uptime of guaranteed critical strikes. Now we're pairing that with the Rampaging Werebeast aspect. This reads that the duration of Grizzly Rage is increased by up to 5 seconds, and in addition, critical strikes while Grizzly Rage is active increase your critical strike damage by 10%. Now this is a stacking 10%, so we're guaranteed critting, and all of our crits are increasing our damage, and all of our like other skills that are also dealing damage at the same time are also stacking up this crit damage really high, really, really fast. We're also pairing the Dire Wolf aspect, so that now Grizzly Rage is a Dire Wolf skill, or a Werewolf skill, which is going to give us increased movement speed, which is fantastic, but also, it's going to give us a ton of Spirit Cost Reduction, up to 75% Spirit Cost Reduction. Basically, when we pair that with some more Spirit Cost, uh, Shred is free, and when we're going to be spamming Shred, when we go to our skill tree, Shred's second attacks and third attacks are going to perform a dash, and we get more crit damage with these dash skills, and we're going to be scaling attack speed to dash really quickly. So when you put everything together, we've got guaranteed critical strikes with Shred. We're going to be stacking crit damage with Shred. We don't have a spirit cost of using Shred, and it's going to be teleporting us around. And with that like kind of core and all the other things put together, uh, this build is an absolute monster. Uh, it is so much fun to play. This is probably the most fun I've, I've had with any build in Diablo 4. And uh, now let's get into the rest of the things you need to know about it. So to start us off in our helmet slot is the Tempest Roar Unique. Now, this is a very hard to get unique. Um, and this build, fortunately, does not require it. Now, this reads that your base storm skills are now also werewolf skills. However, we are using Shred, aka this helmet doesn't help our main attack at all. The only reason that the Tempest Roar is helpful for this build is because it gives our Storm skills into Werewolf skills, and that allows us to use Hurricane while we are in our Grizzly Rage skill. Now, while we're pairing that with the while Hurricane is active, you gain plus two ranks to your shapeshifting skills, uh, and that is just a quality of life thing, but you can also just cast Hurricane before you go into Grizzly Rage and still benefit from it. Um, so Tempest Roar is... Technically, the best in slot helmet for this build. However, it is not required. Uh, you can still do this build without it. If you do not have the Tempest Roar helmet for this build, you're looking for a helmet that's got cooldown on it, max health, willpower, and any other stat uh, like dexterity uh, would be really nice. In our chest piece, I'm wearing the Mad Wolf's Glee. Now, this is a awesome offensive chest piece, but it's not good for defense. Uh, and so I'm actually looking for a better defensive chest piece to replace this. Now, this chest piece gives us plus two ranks to all of our werewolf skills, which is a ton of damage. It's got fizz damage on it. It's got poison damage. It's got movement speed. Uh, it is pretty nice. However, um, for end game like Nightmare Dungeons, we can get a... It is possible to roll a four 
uh, damage reduction chest piece, aka damage reduction while fortified, damage reduction from close, damage reduction from poison. Um, there's just so much more defense that we could get out of our chest piece. Plus, it would open up a slot for us to use a different legendary aspect because we are forced into using this legendary aspect. Um, so when I do get that damage reduction piece, I plan to use a better chess piece with damage reduction rolls and the aspect that when you use the uh, debilitating roar, it's now a werewolf skill and immobilizes poisoned enemies. The reason we would want to use that is because then we can then use it during Grizzly Rage. I'm currently not using that skill because I cannot use it during Grizzly Rage, and I'm in Grizzly Rage like 95% of the time. Most of the time when we come out of Grizzly Rage, there's maybe like 5 to 10 seconds that we don't have it active. Um, so basically trying to get that so that I can have that active while in Grizzly Rage. Um, next up um, on our arms we're using these are pretty perfect arms uh the number one things that you're looking for on your gloves are plus four ranks into shred that is the most important thing the second most important is attack speed attack speed scales our damage and our clear speed dramatically uh the third most important thing is lucky hit chance which we'll get into that last and then the fourth most important thing is storm skill uh cooldown reduction but that's kind of like you could roll anything there uh if you get like werewolf crit damage that works as well if you get crit chance that's fine um, but attack speed, shred, and lucky hit are kind of like must-haves on gloves, in my opinion. Next up, we are using our new uh, pants. These are kind of what I'm talking about for a chest piece. They don't have enough damage reduction, but we've got armor on them, dodge chance against close enemies, damage reduction from poisoned, and total armor while in werewolf form. If these were perfect pants, I'd be looking from damage reduction from close, damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned, damage reduction while fortified, and probably an increase in armor. Uh, so this is pretty close to being great. Um, and then we've also got the aspect of disobedience for stacking even more percentage increases to armor. Um, do not use the Tamara Tree pants on this build. Uh, I wouldn't recommend them. Uh, you're going to want to be getting all the damage reduction and armor that you can. Next up on our boots, the number one priority for your boots is spirit cost reduction. After that is movement speed. And if you can get movement speed or killing an elite, uh, that is fantastic. Willpower is also a great role on your boots. Um, the big thing here is that movement speed is not as important for this build because we have a teleport skill. Uh, you do not need like a ton of movement on this build, just be, like it feels good. But because we're instant teleporting to enemies, you're going to be teleporting most of the time and your movement speed doesn't actually augment how fast you teleport. Um, so definitely try to prioritize getting that spirit cost reduction first, and then you can look for other quality of lives there. Um, for our weapon, I already went over, we're using the Waxing Gibius. I don't have a max roll on this yet, uh, but this weapon is really, really fun. Um, it works great when you're spamming Shred. I originally tried this with a Poison Shred build, and I didn't like it. Uh, and then I went for a Lightning Shred build, and now it's fantastic. And I'll explain that in a second. Then for our uh, Totem, on your Totem, you're really looking for cooldown reduction. Your to Totem's already going to roll with cooldown reduction, so you can double roll cooldown on, on this, and then also Spirit Cost Reduction is fantastic. Um, damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned is also really good here. Crit Strike Chance is a wasted stat on this build most of the time. Crit Strike Chance can work for bossing, but um, it's not like super important just because we do have guaranteed crits what is really important is the critical strikes with shred deal 30 percent of the damage dealt as lightning damage to the target and surrounding enemies this is one of the more important aspects for this build because it's going to give you aoe clear and this scales off of the damage that you deal uh we're going to jump into a group and the group gets to get one shot uh because we're going to be dealing a lot of residual damage to them as lightning uh it just helps with clear speed it'll kill a lot of like trash mobs uh this it's not gonna like this crit like lightning isn't gonna like kill an elite uh, but it is a ton of extra damage because we're guaranteed critting next up on our rings your stat priority on your rings is going to be vulnerable damage crit damage um as the most important things and then probably lucky uh hit chance if you can get vulnerable crit damage and lucky hit you're really good on top of that i'd probably go for a max life roll so i, I do need to re-roll this crit chance off i just don't have a lot of funds right now as you can see i've only got 1.3 mil I'm kind of broke. Uh, and then this ring is also pretty nice. I've got lucky hit chance, crit damage, vulnerable damage, and damage to close. Now on this, we're obviously rocking the uh, increased duration of Grizzly Rage. Here we've got critical strikes with core skills, increase your attack speed by 21%. Remember that 
the more that we can attack, the more that we can crit, the more that we're going to stack up Grizzly Rage, uh, the faster our clear speed. Uh, attack speed is really, really crucial for this build, uh, and we'll talk more about that when we get into our Paragon board. And lastly, we've got our Amulet. Now, I've got an okay Amulet. Uh, the number, the most important things here are cooldown reduction. Um, if you can get points into one of the damage passives, I have yet to see an Amulet with points into Envenom. Poisoned enemies take 30% additional critical damage. That additional crit damage is ridiculous. Uh, you could get this up to 60%. You could also get more base damage as poison. I don't think that would be quite as good. Um, but right now, I've got an amulet with spirit cost reduction and cooldown reduction, which is pretty great for me. Um, my base spirit cost right now is 30%. With my amulet giving me another 60%, 63%, so we're sitting at 93% while I'm in Grizzly Rage. Uh, spirit cost reduction, which makes this build feel so, so good. And it's the reason we're using this aspect on our amulet. Uh, you do not want your spirit cost reduction to go to 0 or 100% or 99%. Uh, you still want some cost, which I'll talk about once we get to our Paragon board. Um, but that is our gear and stats. Now let's get into our skill tree. And note that I took off the Tempest Roar, the Mad Wolf, and my Necklace. So that you could see what my points look like without all of the things being boosted because uh, I know that can be a bit confusing but to start us off we are using the storm strike skill and we're here for its free vulnerable 50% chance to make enemies vulnerable is fantastic uh, besides using the exploit glyph we do not have an inherent way to make enemies vulnerable um, so if an enemy lives longer than it's like vulnerable window you're going to want to hit them with a storm strike quickly proc that uh, vulnerable, which takes no time at all with our crazy fast attack speed. Boom, they're vulnerable. You can go back to shredding. Uh, feels really, really good. Next up, we're coming over here to shred and we're grabbing the primal shred. It's gonna give us additional crit damage and the dashing that makes this build feel so good. Uh, we've got wild impulses for our core skills, cost more damage or cost more spirit, but deal more damage. This is probably the last thing I would grab on the build in terms of if you're like leveling with this, just because like spirit cost is probably the thing that the druid struggles with the most until you get to later um next up we've got movement speed while in werewolf form and crit strike chance against close enemies these two things aren't super necessary because movement speed is just quality of life uh and the crit chance once you get the waxing gibbies you're kind of critting all the time but to get the build off the ground or when you're doing a boss and there's only a single target uh this is still pretty nice to have Next up, we come over to our defensive skills. Now, this is where the build is going to vary uh, based off of where you're at. Now, we've got Blood Howl. Um, looks like I got two points into that. I think that's totally fine. Um, blood Howl is going to give us our healing. It is going to get its cooldown reduced when we kill enemies, and it's also going to give us attack speed. Uh, we are not going for the spirit cost. This build has no spirit issues. Uh, you Blood Owl and your Shred is going to attack faster, deal more damage, clear things faster. And then we're using Cyclone Armor. Now, Cyclone Armor is the main thing that you could swap out of this build. Uh, you do want one more defensive skill, Earth and Bulwark. We can't use while we're in Grizzly Rage. We're Grizzly Rage 90% of the time. Debilitating Roar, we can't use until I find a better chest piece than Mad Wolf's Glee. And so that's why I'm currently using the uh, Cyclone Armor, but I will be using Debilitating Roar as soon as I find a better chest piece. The reason Cyclone Armor is actually pretty good for us, though, is it's going to give us 10% non-physical damage reduction. When we activate it, it's going to knock back enemies and slow them down. Uh, if we're in a pack of elites, that's a little too much. And lastly, every 10 seconds, we're going to get 30% damage reduction from this skill. Uh, this is actually quite nice to have. As soon as I swapped from debilitating roar to cyclone armor and i could use cyclone armor while i'm in my grizzly rage i noticed a huge boost in our survivability as well it's got a relatively low cooldown so that we can use vigilance more vigilance is going to give us 15 percent damage reduction for six seconds after using defensive skill the more defensive skills that we have that we can use while in grizzly rage the more damage reduction we're going to be able to get uh so popping both of these is going to give us a huge boost um of, of our uh damage reduction we are not taking a companion skill. Uh, you could use Wolves with this build, but I think they're kind of trash, unfortunately. Uh, the big thing would be cool is to have them fortify you. But in terms of like survivability and the amount of things that you need to put on to make Wolves good, I just don't think they're worth. Uh, and we're not using rabies where you could spread rabies with Wolves and we don't care about that. Um, so not using any companions. I do think that the Wolves need a bit of a buff. Um, next up, we're coming over here to Elemental Exposure. Uh, this is going to give our hurricane a longer duration. 
Hurricane is fantastic on this build. I love this skill. Uh, it's going to, and uh, enemies who are damaged by Hurricane get slowed. They're going to deal 20% less damage. Uh, you could go vulnerable, but we've got guaranteed vulnerable with exploit. So a little bit redundant there. More damage reduction from Hurricane. Next up, we're coming over here. Poison enemies are slowed. We're just mainly coming here for the poison enemies. Take additional crit damage from us. And critical strikes with werewolf skills deal 23% of their base damage as poisoning damage over four seconds. Uh, this isn't a ton of damage just because it's only scaling off of the base damage and not the damage dealt. However, it's still pretty nice to have all those poison dots and enemies. And in our Paragon board, we're going to be doing more damage to enemies that are poisoned. Then we've got our ultimate cluster. We're using Grizzly Rage, which is going to give us Unstoppable. Uh, this is our only source of Unstoppable on this build, um, which isn't great. But as soon as you get the build off the ground, uh, you're going to be in Grizzly Rage like 90% of the time. So you do get to keep that Unstoppable. Just be a little bit careful when you're not Unstoppable for those chain CCs, which is why we're going Unrestrained. Now, this node uh, is actually quite nice. Now, Defensive Posture is going to give us increased Fortify from all sources. Nature's Resolve is going to give us a 15% chance when struck to Fortify for 4% of our base life. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, this is constantly going to give us Fortify whenever we're taking damage. And then reduce the duration of control impairing effects by 9%. Triple this effect while you have Fortify for over 50% of your maximum life. This is great for those like chain CCs uh, because we are only unstoppable in Grizzly Rage. If we don't have it, Unrestrained is going to give us get us out of those CCs much faster. And lastly, Lupine Ferocity. Now, you do have some choices here, but I think this is hands down the best skill. Uh, the damage numbers that you see when Lupine Ferocity gives it 60% increased damage while we're in Grizzly Rage and that stacking crits, uh, we're critting at like... I don't even have my glyphs leveled very much and we're critting like 600 Ks with an attack that's hitting like really, really fast and spamming between enemies. Uh, this is a fantastic note. And if I'm not mistaken, this reads every six werewolf skill hit critically strikes and deals 60% increased damage. But because we're using the Tempest Roar, uh, you're not going to see it right now, but Hurricane is a... Um, is a werewolf skill it becomes a werewolf skill and so while hurricane is spinning and doing its constant ticks it is constantly stacking lupine ferocity so even though this thinks like it wouldn't be up that often you were getting this 60 percent increased damage all the time while you are doing your shred attack for our spirit boons, we're using wariness. This is going to give us 10% reduced damage from elites. That's perfect for us. Uh, we're using avian wrath. We're guaranteed crits, so this is a ton of extra damage for us. We've got calamity to extend the duration of ultimate skills by 25%. Uh, the more time we have in grizzly rage, the more damage that we can stack up and the more damage that we can deal. We got masochistic critical strikes with shape shifting skills, aka shred, is going to heal us. Shred is a guaranteed crit, so all of our attacks are healing us. That feels really great. And then Calm Before the Storm. Now, this is why I prioritize Lucky Hit on rings, on uh, arms, is because you can stack this up and reduce the cooldown of your Grizzly Rage while you're in Grizzly Rage. So if you're attacking a lot of things, you're Lucky Hitting a bunch, uh, you can basically come out of Grizzly Rage and come right back into it. Now, this reads Nature Magic Skills have a 10% chance to reduce the cooldown. It's important to note uh, that with our current spec, uh, Shred is not a Nature Magic Skill. So where this is going to come in is hurricane now hurricane is a nature magic skill but it is also a werewolf skill and from what i've seen uh the waxing gibius will give us guaranteed crits and we can get guaranteed crits with everything so while this is spinning on around on us this can lucky hit and it's got a decent lucky hit chance with 30 percent constantly spinning us around us uh those storm skill cooldowns those cooldowns will let us have hurricane up more often hurricane is going to be poisoning things for us it's going to be lucky hitting for us it's going to be um, giving us a plus two to our shape-shifting skills, which is going to get our shred to a plus 13 on this build. So lucky hit, storm cooldowns, cooldowns uh, will make their, our ability to use hurricane better, which will then make our ability to use grizzly rage a lot better. Now for a paragon board, and I probably spent like three hours tweaking my paragon board. Uh, things I did have, things I didn't have, changing it around, trying to get more defense, trying to get more damage. Um, and what I want to show you is what I'm rocking right now, but it's still got a lot of work to do. Uh, and I want to talk about what I plan to do with the paragon board. So to start us off on our first board, we are using exploit. This is going to give us the guaranteed vulnerable on enemies. It's so important. Uh, everything we touch gets vulnerable, and we're going to deal massively more damage to vulnerable enemies. Um, then we're moving 
moving up into the Ancestral Guidance board. Now, this was a big, tough choice. Uh, I originally had this board, and then I didn't have it, and then I had it, and then I didn't have it. Now, I'm sticking with it for now. And the reason I say for now is because this reads, after spending 75 Spirit, you deal 30% increased damage for 5 seconds. And you'd be wondering, hey, you don't spend that much Spirit. Why are you grabbing this node? Well, it turns out, uh, currently, with my roll on my Amulet, which is not perfect... Uh, I've only got 63% uh, spirit cost reduction. What this allows me to do is my shred currently in Grizzly Rage is costing me 10 spirit. It's 27 just sitting here. But when I'm in Grizzly Rage, that's going to cost me 10, meaning I only need to shred eight times for 5% or 30% increased damage for five seconds. And that's only eight shreds. And I'm constantly spamming shred. Uh, we are shredding multiple times a second. We're probably doing like two shreds a second. Uh, so the uptime on that node is actually pretty damn good. And I might change that. I do plan on updating this build for when I'm level 100. And if I put on a max roll, this probably node won't work. But when I don't have great gear, this is actually giving me a ton of uptime and a ton of damage. So I like that a lot. Uh, then we're getting more maximum spirit and spirit on kill so we can shred more often. We're grabbing a ton of core skill damage here with more core skill damage nodes, working our way up into the Undaunted. Now, I originally didn't have this. This is actually currently a level one glyph, but I plan to level it up. Uh, this is going to give us damage while fortified, and it's going to give us damage reduction the more fortify you have. Note for this that uh, some of the other ones, you need to be at fortify. Uh, this is based off of the amount of fortify we, we have, so this is going to be constant uh, damage reduction for us because whenever we get hit, we get fortified, so we're always getting a little bit of fortified, and if we're fully fortified, we're going to get that 10% damage reduction, and then here we can get up even more core skill damage. There is a ton of core skill damage in this board, which is why I ended up sticking with it, and uh, we've got pretty good uptime on Ancestral Guidance. Next up, I'm moving upwards. Uh, we are coming into the Lust for Carnage board. Now, this board feels really great uh, when you first start playing Druid to grab Critical Strikes with Werewolf Skills Restore to Spirit. Um, this is going to lead us, even though we don't have a ton of Spirit cost, we are still consuming Spirit. Uh, this will give you Infinite Spirit, which feels so good to use. Um, we're also coming up in this angle so that we can grab all of these attack speed nodes right here. I still need to get my requirements up so that I can get even more attack speed, but attack speed is really important for this build. We're getting less for Carnage with the Crit Strikes. Uh, we're going to get um, moving up here. We've got the Werewolf Glyph. This is a great spot to put in the Lust for Carnage board because there's so much willpower. So this is going to give us 60% damage while we're in Werewolf form, which was all the time, plus damage reduction while we're in Werewolf form. We've got uh, Werewolf Skill Damage, Werewolf Skill Damage, Werewolf Skill Damage, and then over here we've got Werewolf Skill Damage, Crit Damage, Werewolf Skill Damage, Crit Damage, Werewolf Skill Damage, Crit Damage, just all really, really good things. And then we're moving out over here. Now, this board is going to be really important for us. This is the Heightened Malice board, and I currently do not have uh, enough points into getting all the things that I want, but I want to talk about what I'm going to do with it. So right now, uh, we've got the Fang and Claw in here. And Fang and Claw, this is actually giving us a decent amount of survivability. So Fang and Claw is going to give us while in werewolf or werebear form, close enemies take 12% increased damage from you. Fantastic. We got another 12% more damage multiplier. Um, but we've also got, this is going to give us 84 at, at the moment. It's not max level. It's I think this is level like a 13 glyph or 12. 84% um, bonus to all magic nodes. And there are a ton of magic nodes in this area. I originally just couldn't find a place to put this uh, because like I was originally had it here for the core skill damage. And that was okay, but these sucked. Uh, and then I was here, and then these things were, like, fine just to get a little bit more damage, but we didn't really care about the healing received. This is the only place that I found it where I actually care about all of the blue nodes, and this is where we're putting it because these blue nodes here are actually pretty good. So we've got damage to poisoned enemies, which is all good stuff, and then we've got damage reduction from enemies that are poisoned. We're guaranteeing things. Uh, guaranteeing poison and then when this actually levels up we will get the benefits from even more things so we're going to get even more damage to poisoned enemies uh, and even more damage reduction when we get this thing to level 15 i do not think after inspecting like the whole board that there's a better spot for this um because it's going to give us a bunch more survivability and damage and usually the like bonus to magic notes isn't super great um so that's what we're doing there my plan for the rest of the board and obviously this is subject to change but what i have in store is i want to uh, go into the inner beast board and maybe connect it this way or this way i haven't decided yet but in the inner beast board we can put the spirit glyph 
The Spirit Glyph is going to give us increased critical strike damage with our core skills, which is fantastic. And then whenever we critically strike an enemy with a core skill, they take increased damage from us. Uh, so that's going to be insane. And then we've got some survivability in armor down here. We've got shape-shifting skill damage, which is going to apply to Shred. And then we can work our way up and like through this like L shape. Uh, and grab Nimble, which is going to give us that attack speed, which is so important for the build. And then we can pop right back out and grab Heightened Malice, which is going to give us that big damage to poisoned enemies. Uh, and that's kind of my plan for the board. There's a lot of other great things I'd love to grab. Uh, there is some um, more like poison resistant armor here, but we'd probably grab this Elite Node. Damage to poisoned enemies, damage to elites, damage to elites, damage to elites, damage to poisoned enemies kind of like do a little V here and then grab this board as well. But yeah, I will have an update. Uh, this video will also be on the website where we keep all of our new builds. Um, so if you guys are looking for any updates on this build and what I'm going to be doing with the Paragon board, uh, that will also be on the website. Guys, that is going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this one wasn't too long. This is one of the genuine most fun builds that I've played in Diablo 4, and I've tried a lot of things. I originally was a Tornado build on Werewolf, but I've wanted to mix it up. I want to try something different. Uh, and uh, I cannot recommend this build enough. We are clearing content that is like pretty far ahead of us for now. And we're speeding through it. We've got a ton of damage. Actually got like a surprising amount of survivability. As long as you're not getting one shot, uh, we've got enough sustain to basically like instant heal up at, off of any hits. Uh, it's really, really good. And I cannot recommend it enough. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. I will catch you on the next one. Take care, guys. Peace.